welcome to the back page lead vidcast and we're joined again by wayne carey former north melbourne dual premiership captain how are you good job yourself very well where did you get to last week did you get lost I, I don't worry about where i got to last week <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't get here on tuesday no, no, that's the, and that was our loss uh we want to talk about the incredible round of footy we've just seen round one which had um big marks and great goals and a bit of biffo too what was your particular highlight Oh, the Cyril Rioli mark was pretty good. I think uh, one of Buddy's goals from 50 was, was special. And um, off the one foot. I just think in general, the, the whole round was a good round. High scoring, free flowing, contested marks. It was, uh, it, was, it was a good first round of footy. But you did pick that a couple of weeks ago. And is that because the flood has been busted or because, um, you know, the sub rule has helped out or what? Oh, look, I think, I think it's a number of different things, but I think the, uh, you know, they're working their way through the zone. There's, the zone's still occurring, but they're just deciding that it's the better option to get it in there quick. So hence we're seeing some big marks, pack marks, contested marks, which, uh, which is great and a lot of goals kicked. Um, I'm sure things will tighten up at stages through the year, but it was just good to see. I, I thought this first round had everything that, a fi- everything that the finals had. It, it, was, it was that intense. Yep. Uh, it also had a bit of niggle too, and Hayden Ballantyne's copped a, a lot of publicity, as has Matthew Scarlett, for what happened in their match on Saturday night. Um, did Ballantyne cop his right whack, or was Scarlett horribly indisciplined? Oh, you'd have to say Scarlett's probably a little undisciplined, but you know, I, I look, those types of guys are always going to be around. There's, there's guys that uh, yap off a bit. Oh, there's not, Ballantyne hasn't done anything wrong other than what he did to Chapman. What he's done wrong and what, what he might find is that he becomes a real target. He's going to have to make sure that he focuses on the footy and starts winning the footy because if it becomes a focus of every side, and let's be honest, every side now knows what he does and what he's about, then he'll become a real target and that may affect his form. And he's, I wouldn't say that he's first picked in that side. I know he's, he's fought hard, he's a good little player. Um, but if all of a sudden he gets put under added pressure by the opposition, which he normally wouldn't, he'd normally get left alone, the stars get the, the extra treatment, all of a sudden he might be under a bit of pressure even to keep his spot. You know, he's, he's now rubbed out for two weeks, so that's, that's, uh, that puts him behind the eight ball. And I, I dare say that he'll be, um, yeah, he, he will be targeted. Chris Scott said he loves players like that and would love to have Ballantyne and his team. Um, there have been pests playing as long as the game has been going, hasn't there? And who are the champions oh. in your day who you um, try and get under your skin? Well, champions don't do that sort of thing, mate. They worry about getting the ball and, and kicking champion goals. Champion pests. Oh, champion pest. <clears throat> Chase McCartney was pretty good. He was, uh, he was right up there with the best of them. I, I would have liked to... Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, I would have liked to have done a Matty Scarlet on him a couple of times, but um, look, the, the game really has gone past any of that type of stuff. I honestly don't think, well, I've watched it probably 10, 15 times on replay, I don't think Matty Scarlet really wanted to, it was a reflex thing. When I hit him, I thought he was shocked that he actually made contact. So, you know, undisciplined, uh, deserves the three weeks, as does Valentine too. Valentine probably deserves another one for being a pest. <laughs> You wouldn't mind Ballantyne playing on your team, though, when you were... Oh, player. yeah. Oh, yeah, look, and, and he's not breaking any rules by no. doing that, but by doing it, you set yourself up. If you become one of those players that other teams love to hate, um, it's, it, it makes it difficult. Um, the night before, how did you view Collingwood's performance? Um, a pretty brave loss against Hawthorne. What about their game plan? Did you notice anything different to the Buckley game? Plan versus the Malthouse game plan. I don't think I noticed any huge differences, but I thought that they performed very well. I thought they had a chance to beat Hawthorne. They hit the front in the last quarter, so they're they're. Uh, you know, I think they're on track. They had a lot of players out. Nathan Buckley, I thought, did a uh, good, did a good job, um, and uh, you know Collingwood. Have, uh, like I think I might have said to you a couple mm. of weeks ago that Collingwood. It'll be interesting to see how they perform. Um, they've lost their first game. Uh, I think they've got an easy one. Richmond. They've got an easy oh, not Well, not an easy not one. Right. Richmond will want to bounce back, but I'd be tipping the Pies in that one. I, th- I, th- I thought they were very, very good, the Pies, yep. considering that we all thought Hawthorne were flying. Yep. What about this? Uh, Melbourne had a bad loss. They got beaten by Brisbane at home. And Mark Neal, the rookie coach, has come under a bit of fire this week. Um, we're very quick to jump onto people and clubs who have a loss after one round? Well, I mean, with all the emotion with Jim Steins and everything else, we expected Melbourne to come out breathing fire. That didn't happen. They were very disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, how much 
how much of that week played on their mind subconsciously, uh, mentally, physically. Um, only they can only they can tell you that. But uh, they they were disappointing. What Mark Neal's done, and let's not forget, it's only round one. It's one loss, and we we uh, we do tend to get a little bit carried away. Mm. What I will say though, Mark Neal's now made a little bit of a rod for his back by saying that he that the same twenty two definitely won't be um, going to Perth. Going to Perth. Um, so he's going to he's basically said straight out he's going to make drastic charges after changes after one loss. So if he doesn't now, it's, he's gone against what he said after mm. the game. So. I think, and, and, and remembering too, that's Mark Neal's first press conference after a game, being in the heat and, the, and everyone asking you questions. It's, it, is, it can be very daunting and even the very best of them get it wrong. So I'm not saying he got it wrong, but I'm saying that maybe he mightn't be as quick to give that type of information out straight after a game in the, in the heat of the battle. The rookie coaches had a tough weekend too. There were, there were five of them. Um, yep. Brenton Sanderson was the only one to have won. Well, yeah, Sanderson won, but remembering it was against the Gold Coast. His opposition. So, so the opposition wasn't great. McCartney at the Bulldogs. McCartney, McCartney looked, uh, you know, probably because of uh, what happened to Melbourne, probably been overlooked a little bit. I thought the Bulldogs were very, very ordinary uh, for a lot of the game. I don't, th I didn't see anything different from the Bulldogs that um, that, that they were doing under Rodney E. I thought that there could have been a couple of changes made um, um, on earlier. Earlier, yeah. I thought that, so. They could have tried a few different things, but in saying that, they they had their patches. Um, I, don't, I still don't know why they young Smith's debut was absolutely brilliant. I, th I thought he was fantastic, kicking four goals. They took him off, then they did, then the Eagles kicked nine goals straight. So I'm not sure why they took him off. Maybe it was a pre-planned um, set of time that he was going to play, being an 18 year old. But in saying that, if you even if you've got a plan, plans can change, and you can change things midway. And if a kid's just kicked four goals, he's playing really good footy. Keep the kid on. on. Keep the kid on, and let him uh, play a little bit more. Um, Buckley, we've talked about. It was another rookie coach. Scott Waters' performance with St Kilda and Port. Did you see much of that game? Yeah, I did. I've, I've watched that game as well. Uh, yeah, St Kilda disappointing. They they let Port Adelaide get off to a start. They 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 got the lead a few times during the game, but. And, and look, could have, could have quite easily won St Kilda. Yes. There's no question about that. But, you know, you'd, you'd expect St Kilda, well, I think St Kilda's a better side than Port Adelaide. So, for me, um, disappointing. 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 Yeah. So, as Dennis Pagan would have said to you many times, the senior coaching gig is, a, is where the buck stops. That's the tough one. Anyone can be an assistant. Well, anyone within reason. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden, um, after round one, you know, these rookie coaches are finding themselves under pressure and that's when we'll find out what sort of coaches they are yeah. under under the scrutiny that um, is us talking about. Yeah, yeah, from Bagging. Um, let's we're talk about Bagging. We're, we're, we're very, very, very cool yeah. analysis. Yep. Uh, let's look at the next round. It looks to me to be a pretty straightforward one if you're a tipster. The best game of the round is Geelong and Hawthorne on Easter Monday. And Scarlett is obviously missing for Geelong. I don't think Luke Hodge is back for Hawthorne. Um, you got any, which way do you reckon this one might go? Uh, look, on the evidence of the weekend and also with Scarlett being out, you'd have to go with the, uh, the Hawks, I think. Yeah. Um, Geelong, and remember last year, Geelong had a very good, Geelong only just fell over the line against um, St Kilda in the first round. This time they've just been, been beaten. So how they bounce back from that, th those close wins are ultra important. If you win those close ones, it can set your whole year up. Yeah. Hence the Kangaroos lose another close one mm. um, in round one. Will that come back to bite them later in the year? Hamish McIntosh, did you back him in from there or not? Yeah, look, I, look. 40 metres out, 45 degree angle. Wasn't a difficult kick on right footer, right to left. What I do notice about Telstra Dome in defence of Hamish is they don't, a natural right footer, if you kick it at the right post, it comes back right to left with, with your leg, oh. so to speak. Same with the left footer, with your leg, it'll come left to right. Yeah. At Telstra Dome, at Telstra Stadium, not Telstra Stadium, Etihad Stadium, it actually goes, it actually fades. It fades the other way. And his kick was actually hit in pretty much the right spot for it to come back. He maybe hit it a bit bit flat and hard for it to do that, but generally that would drift back. At the MCG, you reckon? At the MCG, that would drift back and that would be a goal. Okay, there you go, food for thought. Um, Wayne Carey, thank you so much for your insights. Uh, again, I'm glad we found you uh, and look forward to your thoughts again next week. Thanks, Charlie.